Well, of course, a major difference with the last general election, something I don't think many have clocked onto yet. Big difference is going to be Reform UK uh, pledging to stand against every Conservative MP. And of course, you had the Brexit Party stand down candidates in all Tory held constituencies at the last election, helping uh, Boris Johnson and his party then to a massive uh, majority. Now, since then, of course, we've seen a lot happen. Boris ousted, uh, Liz Truss ousted. And of course, Rishi Sunak uh, put in and apparently set to backtrack, it looks like, already on one of his key pledges to stop the boats by the time of the next election. Now, in terms of the reform factor, they have established themselves. They're not surging as they were, but they've established themselves at around about the same level of support as the Lib Dems. So if you look at the latest opinion poll out this weekend, for instance, they were on 8% up one compared to the Greens on 6 and the Lib Dems there on 10. Now, let me know if you've seen much coverage of their spring rally, but Reform UK did hold their spring rally yesterday uh, in Derby. Party leader Richard Tice claiming there was a crowd of 800 people. You had speakers like Ben Habib, uh, Anne Widdicombe, the deputy leader, uh, Dr. David Ball, Belinda DeLucy, and Alex Phillips. And yet again, Tice reiterated uh, that the party intends to stand at the next general election, a reform candidate in every seat in England, Scotland and Wales. So I'm going to play a bit of what uh, Tice had to say. Let me know in the comments below. Do reform have your support or not? Now, let me just ask, we'll have a bit of audience participation. After 13 years of con-socialist Tory rule, do you feel better off, yes or no? No. One. <laughs> After 13 years of Tory rule, do you feel safer on our streets? No. I hadn't even finished. <laughs> After 13 years of Tory rule, <laughs> after 13 years of Tory rule, is it easier to see a doctor? No. <laughs> I was in Australia the other, the other month and I said that the government was delighted with their new target that you could see a doctor within 14 days. The place fell about laughing. They said if we couldn't see a doctor in a day, there'd be riots on the street. After 14 days, you've either cured yourself or you're dead. <laughs> so that's three no's. The fourth no, I'll talk about a bit more. After 13 years of Tory rule, is our immigration system under control? No, no, no. no. We're on song. This country has never been in such a shocking state after 13 years of con-socialist Tory rule. It is a catastrophe. The anecdote I like to use is imagine we're all in a boat on a calm lake. I know there's, a, I know there's an analogy here. And the boat's being steered by some bloke called Sunak. And the bloke at the back with the engine is another bloke called Jeremy Hunt. And the problem is at one end of the lake, there's a waterfall. And they are steering the boat ever closer to the waterfall. And the thing is, when water goes over a waterfall, or a boat goes over a waterfall, it ain't coming back. It crashes on the rocks below. It's finished. It's game over. Now, I don't know how close we are, but what I do know is that if this lot are allowed to continue to run our country in the way they have been, then we will go over that waterfall at some point in the not too distant future. And that would be an absolute catastrophe. Do you think it'll be better under commie Keir Starmer? No. The truth is, we've almost gone broke, sir, under the Tories. The truth is they're both the same side or different sides of the socialist coin. High taxes, High wasteful government spending, low growth, and the nanny state. As I said earlier, I think it's only Jacob Rees-Mogg's nanny that knows best. 
one thing is for sure, the nanny state does not know best. So we've got the lowest growth for a decade. Jeremy Hunt the other day was delighted with the new IMF forecast. Wow. The UK, we're going to grow next year at... 1% if we're lucky. I mean, that's a big deal. That was not what Brexit was all about. So that's the bad news. The good news is there is still time to make Britain great again. The first thing we've got to do, and we know more than anybody, is we've got to do Brexit properly. And I'm so delighted that, as you've probably seen recently and heard, the gang is getting back together. Because I'm absolutely thrilled. The speakers earlier, Belinda, what an amazing speech. Alex, amazing speech. Former MEPs with me. But he's back. Brexit Ben, I call him. <laughs> Brexit Ben, he's in the room. And if that doesn't whet your appetite, she's also back. <laughs> the wonderful Anne Widdicombe is back. <laughs> the truth is, I'm just the warm-up act. <laughs> but to make Britain great again, we've got to make Britain work. And that means you've got to make work pay but we're being taxed to the hilt. For too many people now, in all over the, every walk of life, people are saying, work doesn't pay. This is insanity. We've got the tragedy of one in eight of the working age population on out of work benefits, one in eight. It's over five million people. And yet big business and all the politicians, they want to import more cheap, low skilled labor from overseas. They're abandoning our own people, and it's not good enough. <laughs> the highest taxes for 70 years, the highest government spending for 50 years, the lowest growth for 50 years. It's an absolute shocker. Absolute shocker. What we've got to do, our key economic policy, to make work pay, you lift the starting point at which you pay any income tax, from 12 and a half thousand pounds to 20,000 pounds, that's 30 quid a week in everybody's pocket. That frees up six million people from paying any income tax whatsoever. What does Jeremy Hunt want to do? No, no, he wants to do the opposite. He wants to freeze thresholds to drag in another three million of the least well off, the lowest paid into paying income tax. They won't bother. It's a shocking way to try and create growth. So don't be surprised if you've got growth at 1%. Oh, but they might be happy about the size of the state. In the last 20 years, the size of state spending in this country has increased by a third. It's now some 45% of GDP. Now, the great Ronnie Reagan, the late great Ronnie Reagan, he said the government's view of the economy is, if it moves, tax it. If it's still moving, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. <laughs> that is no way to run an economy, but that's exactly what this consocialist government has done. And it's exactly what a Labour Party governing this country would do.